Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Wow is the only thing I have to say about today's show. Do we have packed Kentucky Derby weekend stuff on this week's show? It's a big show, Matt. It's a really big show. Kentucky Derby. We've been waiting for this one for a while. I think we have an interesting 20-horse field in the Kentucky Derby. I think we have an interesting 14-horse field in the Kentucky Oaks. So let's get right to it, Matt. We now know the draw, of course, as of Saturday night. 20 horses, a couple also eligibles. Here they are. Doorknock. Drew the rail, Matt. Uh, Gargan, I've heard say this before. I'm sending my horse. I have no choice but to send my horse. He doesn't always send his horse. Do you believe him this time? Um, I don't know, Brian. Uh, uh, but yes, I have heard uh, Gargan say that uh, many times. I think they will send this time being on the rail and being that, the, uh, that they were supposedly trying to rate him uh, in the bluegrass stakes. And if that was true, it didn't work out very well. No, it didn't work out very well. I would also ex expect that Gargan is in of his word this time. And Dornock, uh, fourth place in the bluegrass, will go uh, to the lead. Uh, that uh, could make life a little bit more difficult for the morning line favorite. Of course, that's number 17, Fierceness. A lot of people like that post, Matt, it, despite the fact that 17 is now in the Kentucky Derby, 17 post uh he's got the right rider johnny v, five to two on the morning line fair odds good post i think that it there has not been a horse that has had a more beneficial post position draw than fierceness over the last i can't remember how many years uh, uh <clears throat> drawing to the outside is exactly yeah what and they I, I i'm gonna disagree Okay. I'm going to disagree Go with you just a little bit. There is some speed to his to his. It's, there is some speed to his inside. There's a little bit of speed to it. I think stronghold or re resilience could go, uh, and uh, certainly uh, track phantom there in the twelve is going to go. Even number sixteen, Grand Mo, the it comes down to me for for fierceness in that post. It had horses that were. Right away, I think that would be more advantageous for uh, advantageous, advantageous for fierceness, because then he would have no worries if he breaks just a half a step slow. But if he breaks a half a step slow now with horse, I could see that being trouble. And and from outside, yeah, I I, I get it. Outside's probably a good be to go clear sailing to the first turn, but uh, the break is ultra important, I think, for fierceness, and he, and he could end up having to run a little farther than several others with B to his inside. Can't you say that, Brian, just about every horse in every Kentucky Derby, though? Well, fierceness, the difference is fierceness has struggled when he's broken a little slow, and, and it's happened a couple times. And uh, I, I think this is a spot that would almost be a certain death knell for fierceness if he broke just a step slow in that position. Not that it probably wouldn't be true in a different post position, but uh, with some speed inside and out, I, I would worry just a little bit about fierceness's post. The other favorite also has an issue. Number two, Sierra Leone, three to one on the morning line. Tyler Gaff Leone will be up on the the uh, uh, Chad Brown trained horse and Sierra Leone will certainly be drunk early, may not be a bad, but uh, he's going to have traffic no matter what he tries to do. He, I, I guess if he drops all the way back to last, sailing on the rail at some point, but it, I don't love that, that post for Sierra Leone, certainly. No, I think, you know, in looking at the two favorites, I know you disagree with me, Brian, about the, the post that Fierceness drew. Um, as good as that post position draw was for Fierceness compared to other places where he may have drawn, uh, the other favorite, Sierra Leone, uh, didn't get any favors by uh, drawing 
the two posts. Yes, he's a deep closer. He has been a deep closer, but he's really, really, really going to be a deep closer uh, in this derby. And that means whoever you are, you're going to have to work out an ideal trip. You're going to have to work out an ideal trip, and we're going to see Sierra Leone probably swung wide on the far turn. Uh, very, very good horse. Uh, the post position could create some problems. Third choice on the morning line, Matt, is the four, catching freedom. Also drawn a little bit inside. He might have a little bit more speed than Sierra Leone. He's shown that in a few of his races, but he came from last in the Louisiana Derby. Um, he'll have to uh, run probably a similar trip that we just described for Sierra Leone to get the job done here in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and and you know you're 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 mentioning Sierra Leone, you're mentioning uh, Catching Freedom. Uh, there are other horses uh, to mention that are closers or deep closers, and and, it, and it, for them, aside from working out a good trip, it's going to come down to how fast the pace is in this Derby. And every year, like uh, like Clockwork, you hear. Uh, enough people saying it's going to be a hot, fast pace and others saying, hmm, maybe not so much. Yeah, I, I like the chance Matt, of, of a pretty strong pace because I just think there's some horses that want to be asked early. Oh, there's the time form. U.S. Pace Projector, good time, Matt. And you'll see that uh, several horses here, uh, including to touch a factor in the eight hole. Uh, number 12, Track Phantom. Blinkers on, by the way, for a horse who's already shown a lot of speed. Door knock, there he is on the rail. Uh, number one uh, is projected to be right up there, and they are calling it a fast pace. Other horses, of course, right there include the Fierceness, 17. Uh, West Saratoga it as a speed horse here, uh, as is Catalytic, uh, the second-place finisher in the Florida Derby. Uh, other horses, I think, could show a little bit of speed. Just Steel, perhaps. Mystic Dan could be relatively close. Uh, number 18 out there is Stronghold. I think he will be forwardly placed as, I think, the number 19. Resilience will be forwardly placed. So what, what we're saying here, Matt, is there's a lot of horses who will either be pushing the pace or will be relatively, want to be relatively close to the pace. Throw in those unknowns, the two Japanese horses, uh, maybe Forever Young is less unknown and less likely to be real close to the early pace. But T.O. Password is another horse who could show pace. And we've seen that from these horses who come over from Japan and shown pace before. So I'm I'm expecting a pretty darn good pace here, a pretty, uh, maybe a little faster than average. Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, again, uh, for me, I... I go back to the fact that, you know, a lot of these horses are just not really very fast horses. Um, and, and they've been in derby preps and such where uh, uh, they were more for, forwardly placed, but it's a much tougher, uh, much tougher uh, uh, spot to do that in here. And on that pace projector, I just also wanted to, to throw out there that, uh, Sierra Leone didn't even make it into the graphic. It was noted on the bottom as a deep closer. Yeah, yeah. They, they couldn't fit all the horses in Sierra Leone. Leone is farther back than uh, is shown there on that graphic. So he'll, he'll have a lot of rallying to do, and, and the pace will play a part for him. Uh, other horses like Catching Freedom. Uh, maybe we could say the same about Honor Marie. Matt, I, I know Honor Marie. When we did our long shot show just a couple of weeks ago, Honor Marie was on my list. Honor Marie was not on your list two weeks ago. He's on your list now, I know. Uh, you've, you've come around on Honor Marie. I'd like to tell you, uh, I'd like for you to tell us a little bit more why you've jumped on Honor Marie now a little bit going into this Kentucky Derby. Uh, well, I guess it was in only me because certainly uh, at this point, just a few days from the Derby, Honor Marie has been anointed as the official buzz horse uh, uh, of handicappers and experts uh, about in their uh, uh, their final analyses of the uh, of of the Derby. Um, you know, thinking more about it, I liked. Uh, Certainly liked his performance in the Louisiana Derby. 
uh, where he was second and uh, uh, <clears throat> going the mile in three sixteenths. And the last few years, the Louisiana Derby and the Risen Star have been uh, uh, extremely significant Derby preps. Yeah, I, I, I've I've liked Honor Murray for a while. Uh, I like his Churchill Downs experience. He's he too will be another rallier. Two horses who could be closer to the pace that we've been talking about a lot. Matt are eight and nine, just to touch in Encino, and, and those are both trained by Brad Cox. Of course, uh, uh, Cox always has a strong uh, uh, contingent here in the Derby of in recent years. He's got catching freedom. But both eight and nine, just a touch. And Sino, two more horses that I think are getting some talk this week as we get closer to the Derby. Yeah, I, I think so, Brian. Just a touch. A uh, uh, little bit lightly raced, uh, but uh, last two races have been good. That second place finish in the Bluegrass and in the Gotham. It's Brad Cox and, you know, uh, ignore Brad Cox at your uh, own risk. Okay. One more talk about the draw here and the post kind of ironic that Danny Gargan got the one and 20 holes in with his two horses. That's, uh, that's gotta be uh, a thousand to one to enter two horses and get the one and the 20. Uh, but, uh, tell me who are the big, you know what you're going to say here. Who are the big winners? Who are the big losers from this position draw? I, as I said, uh, at the beginning of the show, the biggest winner, uh, of, the post position draw was fierceness. The 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 uh, pace projector agreed with me um, and did not have the 18, 19, and 20 as horses that are going to be more prominently placed than fierceness uh, out of uh, out of this post position draw. And I think just because we're talking about the uh, the two morning line favorites, I guess Sierra Leone. Uh, 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 was the had the most negative post position draw okay well, well we're going to see in a second here if that changes uh some top picks we're going to do at the end of the show but we'll be an attraction of matt's top picks and my top picks as we look at our suggested was here for the 150th edition of the kentucky they're going to jump right in matt to our suggested wagers for a rate been talking about for months now here on Horse Center. And uh, I, I think it's interesting. Um, you've gone back to uh, perhaps we could call it an old friend with your uh, trifecta wager, something that you've enjoyed doing over the years in the Kentucky Derby. I've kept it simple, uh, a little bit simple here for the show with my wager. I'm trying to pull that graphic up. Let's see if that to show up here on big screen all right it's it's coming up a little slow and matt why don't why don't you start with your uh, uh kentucky derby wager here as i try to get that graphic to uh there it is we'll go with you first you have your old reliable kentucky derby wager yeah i and and i think both of the wagers that i'm gonna uh, give the horse center fans uh are my old reliables and old reliable to me means uh, wagers where I have had some success over the last uh, several years. I probably have a profit for the the trifecta wager, having hit a couple of couple of good ones not too many years ago. So here I am again, same strategy. I'm picking out a horse that I think will come with uh, pretty good odds and will be a horse that will be running late with the chance of getting into the trifecta and that horse is honor marie so i have two trifecta tickets they both begin with my other top picks for the derby sierra leone catching freedom just a touch and fierceness with all hoping for another bomber in that all group with honor marie and then basically the same ticket, except in the bottom two positions, I'm going to switch and put Anna Marie in second and all in third. Okay, so Matt's uh, strategy there with the $72 total wager on the two trifectas is to get Anna Marie, 
who is 20 to 1 on the morning line, could be a little bit lower than that, but but should be solid odds for sure in the Kentucky Derby, uh, either second or third. And, and when he presses that all button, he's hoping for a long shot, but he'll also have his top four picks in case they run first or second or first and third. So that's Matt's play in the Kentucky Derby, and I certainly see the advantages of that, and I like Anna Marie myself. Again, I, I, I kept it pretty simple here, and in fact, my, my $5 exacta play, which totals out to 150 with all the combinations, could uh, could actually chalk out, and I could lose dollars on this wager, but I just, just don't think we're going to see chalk run 1-2 in this Kentucky Derby. I think there's going to be some odd in there. So to my thinking as I make this wager, I, I, I think a horse with odds will fish first or second in this Kentucky Derby. And if that's the case, I want to have them. Uh, my top five horses, Sierra Leone, who I'm a little worried about post, but I, I'm sticking with him. I just think he's a mile and a quarter horse who is going to run a big race for trainer Chad Brown. Catching freedom, the gap between the top, top two favorites and the third race, whether that be catching freedom or whether that be the uh, uh, Japanese invader forever young, or, or possibly even just a touch. I think there, there's a lot of value after you leave the top two. Catching freedom, I like a lot. Honor Murray, he's he's my top long shot. Uh, I guess I decided that in the last week or two, working well, like him over the track. I think he's going to rally up just like Matt does. Mystic Dan, I'm sticking with him too. I, I, I think he got a bad trip, went third in the Arkansas derby i think he can bounce back at his home churchill downs i think he's got a nice turn of foot i could not fierceness uh i'm not quite as gung-ho about the post position but uh as matt is but uh really nice workout over the track i think he's going to get beat here I, I really do but i couldn't not include him in this ticket because if there's a long shot first or second i want to win with fierceness and then the same five horses i have for second underneath Although I added two more long shots. I think Resilience is a horse getting better and better. I'm including him for second. And Domestic Product, uh, he's just run into some terribly slow paces this year. I think maybe with a faster pace like I'm expecting, Domestic Product could be one of those horses who gets up the pick. All right, folks, that's our uh, Kentucky Derby suggested wagers, your favorite wagers. We'll, we'll probably do it, be doing a little bit more than that as well but uh, we wanted to give you uh, our favorite wagers for the for the derby we're going to do the same thing for the oaks matt and we're going to get right to that field now a field of 14 and i tell you what you have two good fillies our pretty woman and candied in, in the also eligible spots if either of those two get in don't sleep on them but the 14 we're going to talk about Tapa Janali and uh ginger and matt are both stakes winning long shots I, I can't like them in here, but I guess it wouldn't shock me if they ran a decent race. Yeah, I th you know, I, I think we can say that for an awful lot of these 14 horses in the Oaks field, Brian. I mean, they, there is a really solid, solid group of horses. Five, six, seven of them, in my eyes, have a legitimate chance to win the race. So you're looking at some legitimate win contenders with odds ranging from uh, the seven to two favorite Tarifa up to, you know, up to other horses that are 15 to one or so, like where's my ring and, um, and power squeeze. Yeah. Where, where's my ring is the number three, as we go down this list and, and where's my ring is remains my top long shot. I, I, I like her. I think Val Brinkerhoff has known she's a talented Philly, the daughter of twirling candy for some time. She's had a little bit of uh, issues here and there. He kept trying her in graded stakes races, including the Breeders' Cup as a maiden. Uh, he finally felt like she was getting fully over everything. Took her to New York because he thought nine furlongs was a better distance for her. She'll get that again here. And she was a very impressive winner of the Gazelle. I like Where's My Ring as a long shot in this Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, and, and uh, was still a maiden when she... Uh won that gazelle uh, at aqueduct you know and, and the race before that she was second in the santa isabella behind uh by behind kinza that uh, uh bob bafford horse that uh is not eligible for the oaks but is probably a good one 
Yeah, and Jin Jin, who was a pretty well-beaten third in the Gazelle, and number four, Regulatory Risk, a pretty well-beaten second in the Gazelle, are both in here as well. Regulatory Risk, I think, is Chad's other horse. I don't see enough there to jump on her in this spot. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Number five is Thorpedo Anna. Thorpedo Anna is a, a, a filly that flashes of brilliance in her four race career. Really impressive uh, debut performance at Keeneland last year. Really impressive, uh, impressive allowance win. She didn't run her absolute best when second in her stakes debut last fall at Churchill, but she's got a nice win over Churchill. One start for trainer Kenny McPeak this year, Matt. And uh, if you watched her, she was just a powder keg. Uh, Brian Hernandez Jr. was sitting on a lot of Philly in that fantasy. It's just a matter of when he was going to give her just a bit of a chirp. And she took off from that fantasy field. Definitely th think Thorpedo Anna is a major player here in this Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, I agree, Brian. One race this year, and it was an excellent race. And with those two good performances at Churchill last year, that's a good combination. Yeah, Torpedo and a one to watch. Lemon Muffin, a long shot, uh, maybe more so than any of the other 30 to one shots. I can look at her and say, well, if she ran a good race, I could see it. I could see it because two starts back, she rallied nicely to win uh, a, a graded stick at uh, uh, Hot, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Oakland Park. Last time, Torpedo Anna bombed her. Lemon Muffin just didn't do her best for Dwayne Lucas, but maybe she pops up as a real long shot here. Yeah, she's a real long shot. Um, and, uh, you know, any horse at this point for Dwayne Lucas uh, is an interesting story. And I guess even more so now with the young, uh, the young rider, Keith Asmussen, son of Steve Asmussen, getting his first derby mount. Uh, Oaks mount, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Keith, Keith Asmussen has uh, really done well this year uh, and maybe surprised uh, – even himself with his results and, and Lucas is using him uh, obviously a lot. He's got him here in the Derby and the Oaks. Uh, interesting story there. And Steve Asmussen's con son, Keith, uh, riding for both Lucas horses on, uh, on the weekend here. Let's look at the pace projection because the next horse on the list, Matt, is the number seven, Fiona's Magic. Another big long shot. She was a, 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 a winner. Two starts back, great stake, the Devona Dale at Gulfstream Park. Last time in the Gulfstream uh, Park Oaks, though, she she spit the bit early and was nowhere down the stretch. But she's got speed, and she will definitely be one of the ones out there early. Once again, we see a fast pace projected here in this big field for the Kentucky Oaks. Others, they're talking about, where's my ring? I, I think she's going to be a little farther off this pace than they're projecting, uh, but she was right there in the gazelle early. Uh, certainly number 10, weighs, uh, number 10 into Champagne. I'm sorry. Uh, who uh, set the pace last time in the Gulfstream Park Oaks is one they expect. But then a, a, several other Phillies not that far off, which should be a solid pace here, Matt. Yeah, it certainly should be, Brian. All right, and we'll see some of the favorites a little farther back. Number eight, Tarifa, we haven't talked about uh, kind of mid to uh, a little farther back. Also, um, uh, who else is back there, Matt? Number two, Jin Jin is farther back. Number nine, Everland, who's never run on dirt, is farther back. Power Squeeze, who's coming off several stakes wins in a row, is uh, a little farther back. But some of the main players, uh, Tarifa, number 14, Leslie's Rose, coming off an Ashland win. And number 11, Ways and Means, will kind of be mid-pack, looking for positions. Will the uh, uh, Torpedo Anna the one we've already talked about. Let's get back to the main field, Matt. After the seven, uh, Fiona Magic, who's looked like a long shot. We have the morning line favorite at number eight. Flavian Pratt will be aboard Brad Cox's uh, Tarifa. Seven to two on the morning line, Matt. She's not my top pick in here, uh, so I don't mind her as a favorite, but she certainly she wouldn't surprise me if she ran another good race. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, she's not my top pick either. She has won four out of her five starts, uh, swept uh, uh, Oaks prep races uh, at the fairgrounds and the fairgrounds Oaks and the Rachel Alexandra and an allowance race at fairgrounds this year, interestingly, and, and take it for what it is, 
the only loss in her career was a fourth place finish at Churchill Downs. Yeah, and that's her only start at Churchill Downs. And not only is her only start out of the money at Churchill Downs, all of her wins this year, and that's why she's the favorite uh, on Friday, were at the same chalk at Fairgrounds. Also, I, I think things only get tougher here with so many other good fillies joining the fray now. So, Tariva, don't get me wrong. She could win. She's obviously very good. But uh, I like other fillies better. And, and that's a good thing when you're trying to win some money on a race. So, the fact that the morning line favorite is not one of my top horses, I'm okay with that. Everline, Everland, we already mentioned, first time on dirt. She'd be a surprise here, I think, Matt. Number 10, Into Champagne. Speed, again, another Florida horse with speed. And uh, she's trained by Ian Wilkes, and she's got some talent, I think. Yeah, started out her career nicely. Uh, last couple races were in uh, in those Gulfstream Park uh, prep races where she ended up third in the uh, Gulfstream Park Oaks and was second in the, the Devona Dale before that. And as we mentioned, there, there are a number of horses in this Oaks field that uh, – took that path to get into the race. And for what it's worth, you know, it may, maybe we should say this about Power Squeeze too, but for what it's worth, Into Champagne was ahead of Leslie's Rose in one race down there, and she was not far behind Ways and Means in another race down there after kind of battling on the lead. So Into Champagne is a long shot that you could at least consider here in the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, again, though, probably part of a pretty good pace. Number 11 is Ways and Means, and she's the real wild card of the field for me. Uh, I, I thought her debut performance at Saratoga was was monstrous, Matt. Chad Brown changed, trains this uh, practical joke. Now, I don't love practical jokes generally going a little farther like she has to do, and I don't love the fact that she's only had one race in the last eight months or so, and her only two races before that were sprinting. However... On a talent scale, she could easily be the best of the bunch. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, that uh, near 13 length maiden win at Saratoga <clears throat> was followed by a second in the spin away. And then coming back in the uh, Gulfstream Park Oaks in her only start of this year. Both of those races, she had legitimate trouble. Uh, um, uh, took her a while to get clear to uh, uh, make a run, and in both cases, fit his second and, and a close and competitive second in there. So, uh, you know, this is one that I see that could make a step forward uh, for Chad Brown, the way he prepares horses, getting that one race in, and if, and if she can finally get a good trip. Yeah, and she actually came out of that spin away with a minor injury as well. Super talent. I, I said I don't like the fact that she only had one race around two turns and only one race months or so, but not countered with a good point. She's trained by Chad Brown, and, and Chad Brown is a master at getting horses ready off of layoffs. Number 12, power squeeze, Matt. Uh, it, it's hard to look at her form and say she's a long shot, but there she is at 12 to 1, coming off nice performance after nice performance in Florida. Yeah. And and as I said, uh, when we started to talk about the Oaks, there are so many horses in this field that are coming into the race with credentials that some of them are going to be higher odds and, and thus power squeeze, uh, who has won her last four races in a row uh, at Gulfstream Park, the Gulfstream Park, not all, all of them in Florida, excuse me, Gulfstream Park Oaks. The Sun Coast at T at Tampa, the Cash Run at Gold at Gulfstream again, and a maiden special weight. So uh, this filly has been doing nothing wrong for quite a while. Yeah, it, it's it's a little frustrating for me uh, because I don't like her quite as much as some. But if the pace is fast and she's double digit odds, you you kind of gotta include her in your exotics at the very least. Number 13, just FYI, um, I really liked her return race in the Ashland, Matt. I know she was beaten, clearly beaten by Leslie's Rose, the horse outsider here. But I really liked the way she looked. 
uh, kind of splitting horses and, and, and running with a lot of interest down the Keeneland stretch that day in the Ashland. That was her first career defeat after being an undefeated champion at two. I was never overly impressed with any of her three wins as a two-year-old, but certainly she was the best two-year-old filly in the country. She deserved her championship, uh, but I liked what I saw in the Ashland. And I love what I've been seeing at Churchill Downs. She looks so good in the mornings here at Churchill Downs. Just for FYI, is is clearly in with a shot here from the outside post. Yeah, and and the, here we're talking about a horse that clearly, from her Ashland performance and the way she has been looking uh, the last couple of weeks at Churchill Downs, uh, fits the role as a horse that. Uh, seems to be ready to make a big jump from the two from two year old to three year old. And hey, Brian, I I gotta like the fact that uh, she could be the the third choice in this in this field. And regardless of that, is is gonna be a decent price. Yeah, well, there's five horses within seven to two and five to one. That that's you don't see that very often. Five horses between seven to two and five to one. Any of them. Uh, you could make a case for them to be the favorite in here. It just FYI, I'm certainly one of them. But the fact that you got the two-year-old champion coming off a good return race, looking good at Churchill, Bill Mott gets them better as they go. There's a lot to like about the 13, just FYI. Number 14, Leslie's Rose, uh, Irad Ortiz, Todd Pletcher, coming off a nice win in the Ashland. Yet I really like the horse she beat in the Ashland better, Matt. I, call me crazy, but uh, Leslie's Rose uh, skipped her on the rail and skipped away. Uh, she had been racing while Just FYI was coming off a layoff. I kind of think Just FYI turns the tables on the 14 Leslie's Rose this time around. Yeah, and of course, Todd Pletcher has won the Kentucky Oaks four times already. But I think I can go back to, to what you said about another horse uh, a little bit ago in the Oaks that Leslie's Rose now is facing without question the toughest field that she's ever faced. That list of horses that we've talked about that we think are serious win contenders. This is not an easy spot. Yeah, yeah. And and you could call us biased for not jumping on Tarifa or not jumping on Leslie's Rose winners in their last race but matt and i've been doing this a long time and there are signs we see where there could be tables turned we've seen it many many times before and that's kind of what we're thinking here in the kentucky oaks and without further ado matt let's get to our plays that popped up right this time uh right quick this time matt and i'm gonna let you go first with your play in the kentucky oaks yeah and again i'm going in with another one of my old reliables with a wager that I have had a good bit of success in uh, in the last uh, five, six years or so. That is the two-day daily double, which combines the Oaks and the Kentucky Derby uh, starting on Friday. Um, you know, the one thing that uh, 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 that I that I don't like about playing this is be, is that you that it is really hard to monitor what the the prices are for this wager because it's a two-day wager uh, uh, prior uh, to to making the bet. But anyway, I am my strategy is simple here, Brian. I am taking my top three for the Oaks, and for me that is just FYI, Ways and Means, and Thorpedo Anna, and wagering them in that daily double with my top five from the Kentucky Derby. Um, um, they, uh, I've said them before, Sierra Leone, Catching Freedom, Honor Marie, Just a Touch, and um, Fierceness. Fierceness. Of course. I'm not leaving Fierceness out. Uh, <clears throat> that's 15 combinations. A $5 wager makes a total of $75. Um, I probably uh, might play the the – the the combos that are going to pay a little less with maybe fierceness and Sierra Leone with a ten dollar ticket, you might say kind of like Brian, what you said when you talked about your uh, Derby exact wager. Oh well, what if the favorites come in? I might, you know, I might not make any money. You know what, Brian? And I feel the same way about that exact wager of yours. Uh, uh, 
if if you get the two favorites with these big fields, now you're not going to get a great payout, but it's not going to be like you're going to get a, a, a an eight dollar double or a fifteen dollar double. You're still going to get a payoff that's like twenty five dollars or so. Yeah, I agree. The Oaks is a wide open race. And uh, especially if you get anybody but Fierceness and Sierra Leone, you're going to make money. But even with Fierceness and Sierra Leone, it probably is a money making venture there. If you hit this double, Matt, good luck. I'm going with my top three. I, I agree with you as far as Thorpe, Pito, Anna, and just FYI. Those are my top two, certainly here in the Kentucky Oaks. But I'm also throwing in my long shot. So I'm going to box them, exacta box. I have a $10 exacta box recommended here. That's a $60 ticket. Where's my ring runs first or second? I'll be happy as long as one of my top two picks is the other first and second. And I'm using the same three in, in a favorite bet of mine. Uh, the Kentucky Oaks, the old Forrester Turf Classic, which is Saturday before the Derby and the Kentucky Derby. So a two-day bet like Matt's. I'm going to do a $2 pick three, same three fillies in the Kentucky Oaks, Torpedo Anna, just FYI, and my long shot, where's my ring? In the old Forrester, I really think I'm very busy, is the most likely winner. He's second choice on the morning line, a pretty good field there. So you, again, you shouldn't have real low prices in the old Forrester. Uh, his biggest threat, though, I think is naval power because he is a horse that Charlie Appleby just, it, that horse wins and wins and wins. And he's come back really strong after a, a long layoff last year. So naval power is my second play in the Turf Classic. And then my top five in the Kentucky Derby against Sierra Leone, Catching Freedom, Honor Marie, Mystic Dan, and I got to throw fierceness in just in case. So that's my two suggested wagers in the Kentucky Oaks. Matt, uh, before we uh, get to our top picks, I want to remind everyone that Super Screener, our friend Mike Shuddy has put in years and years and years of data uh, and, and, and extrapolated all the information of why horses run well in the Derby and why they don't run so well in the Derby. And it's, uh, it, it really is uh, more than just hunch playing here with this super screener. Time and time again, Shuddy's uh, suggested wagers in the super screener uh, hit and, and hit pretty good. So definitely take a look at that product. And there's a lot more than just the Kentucky Derby as well uh, that they're doing with the super screener. Anything to add on that, that super screener product, Matt? Yeah, it, it, it is years and years and years and years uh, of... Uh, uh, you can say data, but you know, looking more, looking at the trends and the kind of horses that do well and don't. And, and Mike Shuddy is a is a is a very good horse player, and I say that that you know he knows how to craft the right kind of wagers and the right kind of long shots to to use to get yourself a big payout. Yeah, we highly recommend it. We honestly do. And that's the uh, Kentucky Derby Super Screener. So check that out. It's available, of course, all week. Now for our top picks, Matt, I'm going to let you go first. Let's get that on, on the screen here. I, I think we've tipped off people who we like and who we don't like in here. But let's uh, get that on the screen. There it is. Matt, how about you in the Kentucky Derby? Yeah, Brian, uh, you know, I, I think we've talked about the horses. I tried to, uh, both with my derby picks uh, and my Oaks picks, have a combination of horses that are, you know, the, the, the more likely winners in terms of uh, uh, the favorites and such, but not those alone. I've got some horses that are with better prices, so I've got Fierceness, Honor Marie, Sierra Leone, Catching Freedom, and Just a Touch. So the two favorites, along with three horses that are likely to be uh, uh, double digits or more. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Catching Freedom, eight to one on the morning line. Uh, good chance he has really good value for what kind of horse he is. In fact, my top two, and clearly my top two, are Sierra Leone. I'm sticking with them. Matt, you, you've actually jumped on fierceness as your top pick now, which wasn't true earlier. That post position has a big part of that? Yes, absolutely, Brian. 
Okay, and, and I'm I'm sticking with Sierra Leone. I, I'm not going to get off because of the post. I don't love the two posts, but I think he's still the horse to beat for me. But I, I'm really close between one and one A, which is number two, Catching Freedom. He's actually number four on the program, of course. Those are my top two. My top two long shots are, like Matt, Honor Marie and Mystic Dan. I think both have a very good chance to run a good race, and I think the odds will be right, especially on Mystic Dan, who should be more than 20 to 1 on this Kentucky Derby. And finally, I had to throw fierceness in because he is the fastest horse in the race. I don't love his chances on Saturday, but I can't completely dismiss him. So he's my number five. How about in the Oaks, Matt? Yeah, in the Oaks, um, I think I uh, uh, stayed away from the uh, the morning line uh, uh, favorites a little bit. And I am going with my top choice, just FYI, number two, Ways and Means, and number three, Thorpedo. Uh, all of them uh, rated around five to one. Yeah, it's interesting that the top two choice on the morning line, I don't know that that will happen in the odds. It's yet to be seen. They could very well be. To refund Leslie Rose, neither Matt and I have in the top. Um, take that for worth. We both like just FYI. I like Keto Anna even more than Matt, but we both like that one. Those are my top two. And, uh, of course, I have to have a long shot in there. I think Where's My Ring is a very, very live long shot in this Kentucky Oaks. Big show. Well done. Good picks. I hope these picks uh, help our audience, whether they're doing exactly what we do or doing something variations of what or a combination of some of the things they like from me and some of the things they saw you i hope that helps them enjoy these big races even more and cash some tickets you couldn't agree more brian uh yeah you can uh change the denominations of the wagers you can uh you see the betting strategy you can uh if you've got other long shots that you like more flip them in and take out the ones of, of brian and i or add in uh, of one or two of your long shots, we're, we're we're trying to give you our our personal tried and true wagers uh, that have worked for us and for me. That's that Oaks Derby Daily Double and the and the trifecta keying a long shot. Uh, so much racing, folks. Uh, um, starting with the Oaks on Friday and Saturday. It's my understanding. Brian, that the window's open for Derby wagering and Oaks wagering on Tuesday. Today, you can go to your favorite uh, ADW and start betting. I think they'll be starting to post the early odds for the Derby. So more information will be pouring in. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. Well said. Um, yeah, you bet, bet early if you want. Uh, uh, it looks like there's a chance of rain both days, but not a overly uh, rainy kind of day on either day. I would expect a fast track. Uh, fingers crossed, at least. But I, I would expect a fast track for both. I want to thank uh, Candace Curtis, as always, for the great race graphics. She does time, time for you for those pace projections. Uh, Derby Wars, our, our sponsor, the best contest. Tuning in, in, Matt and I sure do enjoy doing this show now for the past decade or so. A couple of horse racing stuff, and we know uh, more than anything, the Kentucky Derby is the, fo is the race that people want to win. We do too. Good luck. We'll see you next week talking about the Derby and then the Preakness right here on Horse Center. We'll see you then.